Ever been gaslit? How about love bombed? Do you ever ask, how did I let myself end up in an abusive relationship? In this episode, I'm going to explain how gaslighting and love bombing can lure you into an abusive relationship. And the irony is, you're the one who feels guilty at the end of it. By the end of this episode, you'll have my favorite tool for combating guilt for when you feel guilty for ending up in an abusive relationship. This is The Answer to Everything, the podcast where you listen to real life counseling sessions that guide you to the answer to all that shit you think is messed up about you. My name is Rachel Sievers. I'm a retired psychotherapist and I've logged over 12,000 hours counseling individuals and couples in private practice. I'm bringing the life-changing benefits of counseling to you because I believe everyone deserves access to the tools, knowledge, and compassion that counseling provides. Abuse shows up in the tiniest little ways. The 15 comments that happened that day or the love bombing that happens for six months at the beginning of a relationship that just over and over again, this person is communicative and kind and really complimentary and they're doing all the things. Like there's these like little ways that these people creep in. They catch you on their hook and then they reel you in. And before you know it, you're flopping around on the deck of their boat. What is that? Today, we're going to be talking about how abusers work. How do we get gaslit? How do we get love bombed? How do we get pulled into those abusive relationships? And then switch. How do we end up feeling guilty about it later? How could I have let myself get pulled into these abusive relationships? That's what we're going to talk about today. It's a big deal. I have worked with people who have been in relationships for a year. Two years, five years, 25, 28 years who just then realize, holy shit, my partner is abusive. It is so insidious. If abuse showed up with lights on and bullhorns screaming, I'm an abuser, I'm an abuser from the beginning, we wouldn't be sucked into those relationships. But abusers don't pull up like that. And then we feel guilty, like as if the abusers pulled up with lights and a bullhorn saying, I'm an abuser. If we're dealing with someone who's like antisocial, psychopath, sociopath, those sorts of traits, they are actually consciously manipulating you. They're actually thinking about How can I get this person to think I'm not abusive? And they're going to behave however they need to behave to get you where they want you. The rest of the population just really believes that they're totally justified in yelling at you and being mad at you and saying all the things and doing all the things. Like they just feel so out of control and that's why they hit you or they just really feel entitled to sex. So that's why they rape you or they just feel like you've hurt them. So they deserve to hurt you back. They believe their own story. So let's get really clear about what gaslighting is. Gaslighting is what a person does to another person to shake up someone's sense of what's real and what's not real. So if I heard you say the words, I'm going to kill this fucking dog. And the next day I come at you and I'm like, hey, you know, when you said you were going to kill the dog yesterday, really shook me up. That person's gaslighting me. They're going to be like, I never said that. Are you crazy? Why would I say I'm going to kill the dog? I love this dog. Now in your head, you might go, did they not say that? Were they just joking? Did I hear them wrong? And you might say, no, I know you said you were going to kill the dog. And the other person, if they're gaslighting you, might be like, oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. You, I was just joking. And then inside your head, you might go, were they just joking? They should. They seem like they were being serious, but maybe I'm getting it wrong. Okay, so your gut, your memories, your knowledge of a situation, they're making you question all of that. Here's another example of gaslighting. Like, what happened to that $10,000 that got deposited in the account? I paid the bills with it. I just, I paid the bills with it. What, you don't trust me? Why why are you even questioning me? Fine, I won't pay the bills anymore, okay? That's another form of gaslighting. Like, I know the money was in there. I saw it and now it's gone. And now you're doing all these things to make me like question where the money went and what was it used for and just to shut me up and make me like not even attempt to identify reality. It's almost like I, I know what my reality is and then they make you question it or I'm trying to identify what reality is and they keep you from finding 
what's real. So that's gaslighting. And it's a real mind fuck. Let's get clear about what love bombing is. Love bombing is something that happens at the beginning of most abusive relationships to pull in the victim and get them so deeply entrenched into the relationship that they feel like they can't get out. And love bombing usually looks like the victim's ideal scenario for a relationship. So an abuser is probably going to be able to sniff out the victim, figure out how they like to be talked to, what kind of gifts they like, how they like to be touched. They're going to get to know their victim, which this is actually part of the love bombing process. They listen really really well. They remember every conversation you've had. (laughs) And that's because they're gathering data on you. They're not really doing this consciously, usually. Like, I need to gather as much data on this person so I can lure them in and trap them. Abusers are really great at love bombing because they usually grew up in situations where they had to be so tuned in, listening, watching, checking the temperature of their caregivers, making sure that they are pleasing their caregivers. And so they have this skill of being able to identify and detect everything that you like, what makes you feel good, what's going to make you like them. They had to do this in early childhood. Almost 100% of the time, you'll find this with abusers, like where they came from. They had to acquire the skill early in life. So later in life, they end up using these skills on potential mates checking your temperature. What do you like? What do you don't like? What can I do? What can I say? What can I give you? How can I treat you? How can I touch you so that you really like me? They're going to be really good at it. Love bombing doesn't necessarily end at the beginning of the relationship. It's not just something that happens at the beginning and then it's gone for good. Sometimes it continues to happen, like during the honeymoon stages, after there's a big blow up, they might love bomb you again. That's usually not the terminology we use at that stage, but it's all the same stuff. It's, I got to lure you back in. I got to pull you back in so that you feel kind of trapped here with me. Love bombing and gaslighting are two of the biggest reasons why we get sucked into these abusive relationships. I just, I can't stress it enough. Like abusers are not wearing I'm an abuser t-shirt when they first meet you or during that first six months or first year. They're really nice. The conversation about, well, the reason why I got roped into this relationship is because I was gaslit and I was love bombed, among other things. There's other things too, but today we're focusing on those two things. That, if we take it too far, is disempowering. If we take it too far in the other direction, we're going to say, you are 100% responsible for every feeling you have, every experience you have, every thought you have. You choose how you feel. You choose every response and reaction. Your experience every single day is 100% up to you. You choose to be affected by the people around you. That would be like toxic empowering, I think. The balance between I am empowered to make choices. I do get to decide how I feel and how I react. And I do acknowledge and honor my experiences from day to day. And I'm also affected by the people around me because I'm a fucking human being. So I'm, I'm going to be affected by constant gaslighting. I'm going to be swayed by love bombing because I'm human. Because I'm human. It's like we're equal parts Human equal part spirit, you know, that spiritual part of you is unaffected by the world around you. You're you, you're everything. You're all powerful. And the human part of you is like down here in the muck, trying to have conversations, trying to figure out why there's a knot in your throat and trying to ask yourself, like, is that reasonable that that person just said that to me or not? Or I don't, ah, you know, I don't know. And this, that's the, like the messy, difficult stuff. And we need to honor that both of those are true. Today, we're talking about more of that human gunk right? But I don't want to say that at the end of the day, you're disempowered because you're not. You are. You do have the power to recognize that stuff and leave if you want to. I'm talking about gaslighting and love bombing today because this is what we're hearing Julie talk about in the portion of the session we're about to hear, where she describes the gaslighting and the love bombing that went on in her relationship and how good it felt. And she actually calls herself disgusting for liking that love bombing. And then she goes on to talk about the guilt that she experienced for having gotten swept into this relationship. Okay, let's take a listen. My ex and I were seeing each other. He was married and I was the side chick and we were caught 
and we were going to not talk about it anymore. And that's, you know, we weren't going to see each other anymore. I was fine with gracefully backing out, but he was like, no, he wanted to, he kept contacting, kept contact, kept contact. And I loved it. He gave me a lot of, you're amazing for this and you're amazing for that. And they were all things that I thought about myself, but never, I mean, I'm not, you're not going to go to your friend and say, Hey, I'm an amazing mom because of this, or Hey, I'm an amazing wife because of this. Yeah. But to have it reflected back to you, oh, it feels so good. I had right? never had anybody compliment me like that. I mean, not from my parents, not from mm-hmm. friends, family, nothing. Mm-hmm. And I, all of a sudden, this person was just really putting me up on a pedestal with words, mostly words. So I, it was like a drug. Well, let's add this tidbit of information for the listeners. Now we know. You didn't then, right? But now we know that he's clearly a narcissist. Mm -hmm. He checks off all the boxes. Mm -hmm. And something narcissists are really, really good at is intoxicating you, especially in the beginning of a relationship. I know that now. The more that I kind of learn about narcissism and things like that, it's pretty cookie cutter. Yeah. He's pretty cookie cutter. It's a little bit frightening. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like he was trying to manipulate me, like rubbing his hands together, like, ha ha ha, I'm going to get this. You know, I'm going to win this prize. It wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. It was just like, hey, how's your day going? This and that, you know, it was just back and forth. And it was a lot of attention. Like, oh, I'm doing this or that. Oh, that's, you're such a good mom, you know. My wife would never do that or something like that, you know, throw little things in here and there Mm -hmm. to make me feel like super sorry for him. Like, I can love him. Like, Mm -hmm. I I can do that for him. That's so easy. Mm -hmm. It's so painless and easy. Little things here and there. And it was so slow over the process period of time, you know. Mm -hmm. But looking back. It's like, what was I missing that he was fulfilling a lot? Oh, is it? It's just disgusting. Wait a second. Wait a second. What's disgusting? The, I, just the fact that I was just like soaking up all this attention and... You're being kind of mean to yourself I'm, today. I'm being mean to myself just because I know it was me. I know I put up with it and I've always kind of held a lot of pride within myself. Like nobody's going to get one over me. You know, I'm too smart to be bamboozled or... Yeah. Taken advantage of. And you don't like that this is part of your story. I hate it. I'm sure other people will look at me and be like, oh, that's so sad. I feel sorry for her. And I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me. I did this to myself. I want to encourage you to do maybe one of the hardest things you're going to have to do <laughs> in your life. <laughs> the more you embrace this as a beautiful chapter the closer and closer you can inch to accepting this part of your story as this beautiful, painful part of your fantastic, perfect story and integrate it into, yeah, this is me. I had this dimension and then this other dimension got added to my life and to me and who I am. And then this other dimension got added and then another one and another and like look at how I'm growing it's like there's more colors and designs getting added to your wings all the time you know Mm -hmm. and it can't just be all happy shit and it can't be like yeah I did this really well and then this happened and that was really good and then I nailed that thing and then Mm -hmm. no that's (laughs) that's that's not growth that's not beauty that's not life you know like yeah you made these decisions because at the time they made really good sense mm-hmm. in your gut and your heart and your head. Mm-hmm. That's what was right for you at the moment. And it's still right for you. It's exactly the decisions you were supposed to make. Mm-hmm. And he's exactly the person you were supposed to be with. You want to know how I know that? Yes. Because that's the person you were with. I think that's If you were I supposed struggle. to be with someone else, you would have been with someone else. Yeah, I struggle with that. It's okay. I'm having a hard time with that. Okay. Just let's pause there then. Why is it giving me anxiety? I don't know. <laughs> I'm so ashamed of it. This is nothing I would have ever done, ever. I don't even know why I did it. And I think that's what upsets me the most about why I'm so upset now, like why I'm so down. It's like, I let this happen, you know? I allowed it to happen. So I'm more ashamed than anything, Hmm. if that makes sense. Fuck it. I'm tired of it. had enough of it. (laughs) Seriously had enough of it. 
I mean, it's totally worth it. It doesn't serve any purpose, right? It doesn't really. I mean, okay, so you did it. Now you feel guilty about it. Feeling guilty doesn't change anything that's it been done. It doesn't. And it clouds your ability to really take good assessment of what was done. And it clouds your ability to analyze it. Like, does that work for me? Does it not work for me? Is that something I want to do again? Does Is it not something? You know, when we've done something that hurts people or hurts ourselves, we want to be able to look back at it clearly say, well, where did I miss the mark there? What do I want to change next time? Is there any repair I need to do? Are there relationships I need to repair? You know, but if we're over here feeling like just guilty about it, then we're just stuck in guilt and we're not thinking clearly. So kindly ask guilt to go. No, thank you. I don't need you. Now I'm really going to take a look at everything that happened with a clear head. Okay. And then I can act more effectively. And grow Yeah, more quickly because I feel like I've grown so much in the last few months and Mm -hmm. you're right. I've kind of like the guilt does sort of like stop all of my thoughts and it's just like stuck. Yep. It's like a stuck feeling is what I'm feeling now. Right. Guilt is healthy if it's like I've, I've actually hurt another human. Yeah. Or I've hurt myself. Right. That's something that naturally a human being is going to feel is this like guilt, right? We're right. built to feel that because we're not supposed to hurt each other. Right. Okay. But shame, like we kind of get too mixed up, guilt right. and shame. Shame is something we're taught to do by okay. churches, by parents, by right. organizations, by authority. It's just a control thing. Uh-huh. Shame is a useless thing when it comes to taking really good care of yourself. Okay. If you want to, like, control your children, you can use shame, and it, it's a super effective tool. Yeah. I don't recommend it. Or like, I'm disappointed in you. If you want to, like, <laughs> control a huge mass of people, you can use shame, and it's quite effective. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. I don't recommend it, but, yeah. Tell Did it to get, get go fuck hang out. out over there. Guilt is doing nothing for it. It's, so. it's bogging you down. It is. I Needlessly. Know. I would have never even, I would probably sat here guilty all my life if I wouldn't have heard those words. Oh, fuck that. Yeah, fuck guilt. I'm tired of it. Yeah, you're beyond that, girl. The guilt and the kicking herself for having gotten swept into this relationship, it is so common. I feel it. I have friends who feel it. I have clients who feel it. It is so, so typical in uh, abusive relationships, we are brainwashed into thinking that it's our fault. We are constantly told, I'm upset because of you. I only said that because of you. I only treated you like that because of you. I'm just doing what I'm doing because of you, 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 you. And I mean, another common trait among victims of abusive relationships is we're usually quite introspective. We're usually quite interested and always wanting to be better. So When someone says, you know, this bad thing happened because of you, typically our personality types are going to go, oh, what, what did I do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Maybe I could do something better next time. You know, I, I love this person. So maybe I'll shift or we internalize that and we believe it. So as much as we heal from our relationships and even after we become aware that they are abusive and we're out of the relationship and two, three years later, you might still have a piece of you that goes, oh man, what was I thinking? How could I have done that? How could I have dragged my kids through that? You know, why did I put myself through so much misery? All the signs were there. (laughs) No, they weren't. (laughs) I mean, maybe they were, but they just weren't visible to you at the time. Otherwise, you wouldn't have done it. So what do we do with that guilt? You heard me talk about it in Julie's session. I cannot stress enough how fucking useless guilt is. And the words guilt and shame are really interchanged in in our culture. But what we're talking about here is is shame. Guilt is a physical and an emotional experience that human animals have when we actively or accidentally hurt ourselves or one another. Simply something there that protects us as a species. But shame is something that we are taught to experience. So let's say I do something and I have this guilt feeling. What I'm doing is I'm kind of looking within and I'm I'm feeling it because it's coming from within like, oh, you know, my body doesn't like the way it feels that I feel really bad. You know, I don't I want to make sure that doesn't happen again. If I do something and my first instinct is to look around to see if anybody saw me, that's more of like a shame instinct or 
fuck, is anybody online going to see that? Or is my mom going to find out about that? Or, oh my God, what if my boss saw me do that? Okay. That's shame. You are taught to feel a feeling in response to having a perceived fuck up. If you're feeling guilt because you've hurt yourself or someone else, okay, that's something that you sit with and you learn from it. Okay. But if it's shame, show it out the fucking door. Go, go. Like what I like to do in my private practice is I'll stand up, I'll open up the door to my office and we'll shoo the guilt out the door. It has to go sit out in the hallway and I close the door and it's like, okay, let's proceed with this session so that we can think clearly and talk clearly about the subject and actually come up with a solution rather than just steeping in the guilt. It's so useless. It does absolutely nothing. So my recommendation to you is try something similar to that. So when you are thinking back to when you got sort of lured into an abusive relationship and you feel that guilt, that shame, start to come over you. For me, it's usually like it's in the face. It's in my chest. It kind of, it's like a hot, wet blanket almost. It just feels like heavy and icky. Actually talk to that guilt and visualize it. So for me, it's like a hot, wet blanket. Like, what does it feel like for you? Does it feel like a gremlin holding onto your back? Does it feel like bees buzzing around in your chest? Like, what does it actually feel like? I want you to talk to it and say, get out. If you're in the car, you're going to roll down your window and you're going to let those bees buzz out the window. Roll your window back up and now you're in your car guilt free. If you're at home and you start to feel that guilt, like for me, I would open up that front door, take that wet towel off my head and throw it out. No guilt allowed in here. It's like, I want you to actually say the words, guilt, go away, guilt, get out. And then just imagine throwing it out the door, throwing it out the window, do whatever you need to do to get it out of your space. Now, what you're left with are just the facts, just your feelings and your physical sensations. So then you can look over the beginning of that relationship with just the facts. So this abusive person did this, this, and this. I had always told myself I was looking for someone who could do this, this, and this. That felt very loving to me. You know, so I proceeded with the relationship. I gave this person the benefit of the doubt when they made me question what I was thinking. These are just the facts. These are the things that happened. So now you're looking at the beginning of the relationship more clearly. This is what happened. This is how I responded. This is how I'm feeling about it. This is how my body feels about it. Okay. What do I want to do with that? What is going to heal me, make me better? What's going to help me make better decisions in the future? Now we're actually problem solving. If I have a wet, hot towel of guilt on top of me, I can't look at the data. I can't really sift through my emotions and my physical sensations. I'm just feeling the guilt and I'm not doing anything then. Anytime someone says, I can't believe I did that thing, my first response is always, well, why did you? And the person will always have 10 reasons and they can rattle them off. Well, I did it because of this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And I'm like, well, obviously you had a lot of good reasons to do it at the time. It seemed right. It it lined up for you. It looked like the best choice for you. And maybe it was the best choice for you just because it ended up not feeling good. Doesn't mean it wasn't the best choice for you. Give yourself a little grace. You know, you did what you did for a lot of good reasons. And now you don't want to do that again. So instead of looking back with guilt and whatever, problem solve and figure out, okay, what do I want to do so I don't end up there again? Just be smart about it. Fuck the guilt. Fuck the guilt. This has been the Answer to Everything podcast. Thank you so much for listening, beautiful people. Yeah, yeah.